Proverbs 13 verses 1 to 25 A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of the sluggard desireth, and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. A righteous man hadeth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome, and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. There is that mocketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that mocketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Hope deferred mocketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. He that spareth his rod hadeth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. Opening Sentence Proverbs 13 verse 1 A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. The overarching theme of the two ways, taught repeatedly in the book of Proverbs, continues to be presented in chapter 13. The chapter begins with a wise son who hears God's instructions, contrasted with a scornful son who rejects God's correction. The chapter ends with a contrast between the righteous and the wicked sons. Finding the theme, Eat and be satisfied. References to the word of God as food and fruit are found within this chapter. The very words of God can nourish the soul and make it fat. The tree of life that God planted in the Garden of Eden produced fruit that would have allowed the son to live forever. The word of God has the same effect. Proverbs 13 verse 2 A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. The good fruit is the word of God that the Son has taken into his inner man. The transgressor has rejected God's word and consumed violence instead. In the Bible, violence does not only refer to physical violence, but to the spiritual violence committed against the word of God. All wickedness originates from false doctrine, which is anything that is contrary to God's truth. In the oldest book of the Bible, Job considers the importance of God's words above that of his physical food. Job 23 verse 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Guard the heart and guard the mouth. A man opens his mouth for two reasons— to feed his physical body or to speak words out of his spirit. It is important for God's Son to guard his heart against false doctrine. In doing so, he will also be able to guard the words that proceed out of his own mouth, for whatever is in a man's heart that will he speak. Proverbs 13 verse 3 He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. The nation of Israel when wandering in the wilderness after their deliverance from Egypt, cared more about filling their physical bellies with meat than receiving their father's instruction. 
Psalm 106 verses 13 to 15, they soon forget his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. Numbers 11, colon 4, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? In contrast, God's Son, Jesus Christ, demonstrated perfect obedience to his Father and resisted Satan's temptation to turn stones into bread in the wilderness. When he was hungry, Luke 4 verses 3 to 4, Jesus told Satan, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Jesus also said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. See John 4 verse 34. Jesus was always perfectly obedient to his Father. The Lean Soul Proverbs 13 verse For the soul of the sluggard desireth, and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Physical food can make fat bodies, but spiritual food makes fat souls. The Way of the Righteous versus the Way of the Wicked Proverbs 13 verses 5 to 6 A righteous man hadeth lying but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. The way of the righteous is directly related to his trust in God's word and his hatred for lies that are contrary to God's truth. Psalm 119 verse 104 Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Psalm 119, 128, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. To hate means to reject. Just as a person should choose to reject bad food, the lies of false doctrine should also be rejected. Spiritual Riches There are two types of riches in Scripture, the physical wealth of gold and silver, and the spiritual wealth of understanding God's word. The competition between the two can be observed from Genesis to Revelation. Proverbs chapters 23 and 28 cover the topic of God versus mammon in more detail. Proverbs 13 verses 7 to 8 There is that mocketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that mocketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. In Proverbs 13 verse 1 the son who refused to hear rebuke was called a scorner, which means a despiser. The poor are not necessarily physically poor, but rather poor in spirit because of despising the word of God. What is the ransom of a man's life? Jesus asked his followers, What is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew 16 verse 26 a man must choose what he values most, God's word or physical riches. During the time of Jacob's trouble, also known as the seven-year tribulation, Israel will be forced to make the choice between God's word and food. Revelation 13 verse 17. God's word is the light. Proverbs 13 verse 9. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. The light of the righteous is neither the sun's own light nor his own righteousness. Scripture makes it clear that the light is the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 105 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Proverbs 6.23 For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Proud and scornful. The first scriptural reference to the word contention is found in this chapter. Proverbs 13 verse 10 Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. The righteous son was well-advised by his father's instruction, but the proud son scorned his father's word. The source of contention was the proud words that proceeded out of the scorner's own mouth. Proverbs 18 verse 6 A fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes. Proverbs 22.10 Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yes, strife and reproach shall cease. True Wealth It is absolutely necessary to labor in God's word to increase spiritual wealth. Proverbs 13 verses 11 to 13 Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, 
but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Hope deferred mocketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Whoso dispiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The writer of Ecclesiastes wrote, Much study is a weariness of the flesh. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 12 And the Apostle Paul instructed believers to study to show thyself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Man's intentions to gain spiritual wealth by studying scripture often fall short if any difficulties stand in the way. However, there is a promise of eternal reward for those who pursue the truth. Good understanding. The satisfaction of having a good understanding of God's word is compared to possessing spiritual food, such as the tree of life, verse 12, and spiritual drink, a fountain of life. Proverbs 13 verses 14 to 15, the law of the wise is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Psalm 36, 9, For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. Dealing with knowledge A man who deals in God's knowledge will speak and act with wisdom and prudence as a faithful representative of God. A man who rejects God's instruction speaks and acts from his own wisdom, which is foolishness to God. Such a man will come to spiritual poverty and shame. Proverbs 13 verses 16 to 18 Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. God's sweet words. Proverbs 13 verse 19 The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. To labor in God's word is its own reward. 1 Peter 2, 2 As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Psalm 119, 103 How sweet are thy words unto my taste! Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth! Repayment God's Son has free will to choose the path on which he will walk but he cannot resist the consequences of his choice. The reward for good or evil has been duly earned. Proverbs 13 verses 20 to 23 He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Proverbs 13 verse 24 He that spareth his rod hadeth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. God wanted his son Israel to be wise, but he knew this would not come naturally. God chastened the nation of Israel betimes, meaning early and often, in order to help him become an obedient son. In time past, God chastened Israel with physical punishment. Read Deuteronomy 28 verses 15 to 68 and consider the history of God's chosen people. In a future dispensation after the rapture of the body of Christ, God will return his attention to Israel and complete the chastisement of his chosen nation. Conclusion Satisfy the Soul Proverbs 13 verse 25 The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. The righteous son eats the word of God, which satisfies his inner man and makes his soul fat. But the wicked son refuses God's instruction, which causes his soul to be poor and lean. Summary Spiritual health and prosperity comes from diligently seeking and feasting upon the word of God. The wicked refuse the good word of God and choose to pursue physical riches instead. The righteous soul enjoys the sweet words of God, while the wicked soul is never satisfied. Dispensational Consideration In today's dispensation of grace of God given to the Apostle Paul for Gentiles, Ephesians 3 verse 2, Colossians 1 verse 25, God does not chasten the church with physical punishment. God reproves and corrects the body of Christ with his completed Bible. 
2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. No law can ever make a man righteous. Only the word of God can make a believer perfect. Christ's righteousness, demonstrated by his death on the cross, already pleased the Father on behalf of those who place their trust in his sacrifice. The only thing that the church, which is the body of Christ, is required to keep is the doctrine entrusted to the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 1 verses 12 to 14 Life Application Believers desire to understand the Word of God, yet the sin of slothfulness can prevent them from studying it. Yet, how easy it is to consume the things of the world. Diligent time and effort spent reading God's Word daily, meditating on it, and seeking to understand it will nourish the inner man. Habitually reading the scriptures will cultivate an appetite for the Word and diminish the appetite for the things of the world. Knowledge of the Word of God is the only way for a son of God to grow and mature in every dispensation. Proverbs 14 verse 23 In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. In Proverbs chapter 14, the word of God strengthens the laborer to build according to his wisdom. Proverbs chapter 13 Homework Concordance Search The word keep is found in 354 verses in the King James Bible. Note the first times it is used in Genesis 2 verse 15 and 324 where it means guard. A keeper of the sheep does not usually own the sheep. He guards them. See 2 Kings 11 verse 6, 25 colon 18 and Psalms 127 verse 1 for more examples. Believers must guard against consuming false doctrine and the things of the world because Satan is the god of this present. Evil world, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. Galatians 1 verse 4, Genesis 2 verse 15, And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Genesis 3 verse 24, So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. 2 Kings 11 verse 6, And a third part shall be at the gate of Sir and a third part at the gate behind the guard, so shall ye keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. 2 Kings 25 verse 18 And the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest, and Zephaniah the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. Psalm 127 verse 1 A song of degrees for Solomon. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city the watchman waked, but in vain. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Galatians 1 verse 4 Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Read and compare. Luke 4 verse 4 in a King James Bible, then compare it with modern translations. The modern versions remove the last half of this verse which says, But by every word of God, or they add a footnote stating that these words are not found in the so-called oldest and best manuscripts. This is a blatant lie of Satan. These so-called oldest and best Manuscripts were found discarded in a trash heap in a Catholic monastery and hidden away in the Vatican Library. These corrupted Greek manuscripts disagree with 95% of existing copies of the majority of Greek manuscripts, and they disagree with each other in more than 3,000 verses. These oldest and best manuscripts were completely rejected by the men who sacrificed their lives for the sake of the true word of God. God's word is light, see Isaiah 9 verse 8, Hosea 6 verse 5 and 2 Peter 1 verse 19. Concordance search, there are 15 references to contention in the King James Bible. Five of those references are associated with strife. Read the verses to establish a biblical definition of contention. Then look up the word in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary for comparison. Concordance search, 
find the word study and studieth in the King James Bible. Read each reference and note how it is associated with physical labor. It is a mistake to think that because believers are saved by the free gift of God's grace that there is no work to do. Believers certainly cannot work to earn salvation, but God's word makes it clear that there is still work to be done by those who have put their trust in him. Search for good works in the Apostle Paul's 13 epistles, Romans through Philemon. The Apostle of Grace has much to say regarding work.